Today we'll be doing the getting started sample for mass transit documentation around RabbitMQ. We'll start from nothing and work our way uh, up from no code to running the in-memory service bus to running in a local RabbitMQ Docker container. And hopefully we'll explain a few things along the way and you'll see just how easy it is to get started. Now, if we're gonna be working with mass transit, one of the first things I like to do is go ahead and add in the mass transit templates. So .NET new dash I for install the mass transit templates. And you can see that we have a variety there. So I'll say .NET new, MT worker is the one that I really want. And we'll call this getting started. Awesome, so if I CD into getting started, and now I can open up writer. I get booted up. Okay, so we can see here that we have uh, a .NET 6 app. We've got Mass Transit 8 and the Microsoft hosting extensions. If we come into the program, it's pretty plain Jane, host builder. Um, there's a couple of extra settings in here that aren't important for us today, mostly these. Uh, the thing to focus on is that we're gonna be using the in-memory and this is how we get our consumers registered in the container. So the first thing we need to do is we need to have a consumer to listen to the messages. <clears throat> so let's do .NET new MT consumer. And that's going to make a consumer for us with a silly name, but that's okay for today's purposes. Here's the message that we're going to be working with. It's called getting started, but I want to rename this to hello message because you got to do hello world when you're just getting started. And we'll call this name. And then we can go look at our consumer. And so here's our getting started consumer. And today I really, I just want to log it out. So let's use the logging extensions. Do, 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 do. Logger dot log information. Hello, name. Okay. So <clears throat> the consumer is kind of like your controller in MVC, right? So if you when you come over to Mass Transit and you're thinking, okay, I want to react to something, I want to react to a message, you're going to be writing a consumer, and from that consumer, uh, if that is a controller then context that's coming into the consume method here, that's like your HTTP context. So instead of a body, we're gonna have a message. And I can go in and get the message. And if I were to command click on name, you can see that I'm going back to the hello message, which is driven by this generic type. So that makes it really easy to work with your contracts. So we've now logged the message out, that looks great. Now we need a way to put publish messages. In order to do that, let's get a new class. We're gonna call this one worker, and we're gonna use the nice background worker, background service, and we'll do the missing member. Okay, so what we'll do is um, while stopping token dot is cancellation request, we'll negate that. So this will just stay in this loop until we get the cancellation token. So the first thing we wanna do is publish a message. So we need to get the bus, get on the bus, and pull that reference in. Now Mass Transit is very much in tune with the async await API, so you can Pretty much every method that you could want is going to have both uh, await support, new hello message, name equals world, and then of course we support the stopping token. And it's an await, so we need to async, and then we're going to await task dot delay 1,000 second, 
1,000 milliseconds. Okay, and you need the stopping token too. All right, so now we have our worker. And let's go back to the program. We need to add this worker in. So here in services, we're going to add hosted service. And we're going to add the worker. Okay, and that should be everything that we need to get in-memory transport up and running. And we're going to have messages publishing from the hosted service of the worker, which is just going to publish a message once every second. And then we have our consumer registered, which will take that message and log it out for us. And in order to see this work, we're going to say .NET run. Go ahead and clear the terminal. And there we go. Hello world. We're just going to see that thing repeat over and over and over. Control C and we're back. Now the trick is let's add in RabbitMQ. What's it going to take to do that? It's actually, it's think it's thankfully really easy. Uh, mass transits, RabbitMQ. Let's go ahead and add that. And we're going to focus on swapping this out. This is the transport selection. So here we're going to say uh, x dot using RabbitMQ. And I'm going to run this on my local machine. And my local machine is localhost. So the host for this is going to be localhost. And I'm going to use the default vhost for RabbitMQ. If you're not familiar, RabbitMQ has concept of a virtual host, which kind of allows you to tenant out the broker, which is actually really nice. So let's, mm -mm -mm, what are you talking to me about? Mm -hmm. Oh, RabbitMQ, using RabbitMQ. X dot. Have I used X? I've used X already. Typical sellers. Did I use CFG already? Why are you barking? That's right. Host context. And then it's CFG. CFG dot host. So there we go. Local host. Grab the default virtual host. And then we'll say username. So it ships with guest guest as the username and password. Mm -mm -mm -mm. CFG dot receive. CFG dot configure endpoints host context. And what's your issue? Hides outer parameter. Cool. CXT. All right. And this was all we really had to change. I didn't touch anything else. So let's go back to our terminal and we're going to do a Docker run. Now I'm on one of the newer MacBook uh, M1 processors. Oops. So I've had to specify this platform Linux ARM 64. If you're running on an x86 machine, you don't necessarily need this. So let's go ahead and get this Docker up and running. All right. And it looks like we're ready. So now I'm just going to say .NET run. this little and we can see hello world here we can also let me go get do, 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 do. so if I come over here to RabbitMQ and I can see that the various messages are running as well if I go look at the exchanges here I can see my exchange name of contracts low message, and I can see my queue name of getting started. If I click on the queue, we can see just a continual uh, 
number of messages. We're slurping through them so fast that we're probably not going to see anything really queued. And that is getting RabbitMQ up and running. Thank you, everyone.